Antonio starts right now. We're so devastated by the loss. The whole trailer park behind the building is gone, and we don't know where everybody is. This morning on GMSA, the death toll reaching 26 people after storms ripped through Mississippi in the south. What officials are doing right now to help the area recover. Back here at home, we've got our eyes on an early morning wreck. One happening at I-35 in Crossroads. Uh, this one, th this screen you're looking at is 10 in Crossroads. You know, I was driving in this morning, saw a lot of that backup. We'll have the latest for you on that. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, still waiting for the sun to come up. Hopefully another gorgeous day like we saw yesterday. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, tell you what you can expect, not only for today, but also for your work week. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday, March 26th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Did you make it outside yesterday? I did. Oh, you are glistening like the sun yesterday. I know. I try. Gold. Beautiful. <laughs> what did you guys do? Uh, you just spent some time outside. I worked in the garden, went shopping, and you were at the Pearl. Yeah, great day outside. You I ventured was, everywhere. We were, we were able to be downtown too. It was a really gorgeous day yesterday. You know, we got up to 83 degrees yesterday. Today we're going to be even a little bit warmer around San Antonio. And some clouds have moved in just in the last hour or so. But as we take a look out at temperatures this morning, it is on the cool side. It's 55 at the airport, 48 at Bulverde, 51 in Rio Medina, 43 in Kerrville, and 43 in Comfort. Now today's forecast calls for a mix of sun and clouds. Part Partly cloudy skies, but warming temperatures. By 10, we'll be in the upper 60s. Around noon, 76, 81 at 2 p.m. and 86 for the high. In the afternoon, it will be mostly sunny, even though we've seen some clouds move in right now. Winds today are going to be light and variable, so we're not going to have too much of a breeze. Now, coming up in the forecast, we've got rain chances, although low rain chances, at least every single day. So I'll walk you through our first chance for decent rainfall coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We're tracking a rollover on I-10 and Crossroads. You can see it causing backups on the roadways. I pass this on my way to work. It's down to one lane, and this is heading northbound. Uh, I did see a tractor trailer out there, and they were towing um, at least two vehicles when I drove by this incident. Once we learn more information and how it will impact your travel this morning, we'll keep you updated on air and online. All right, we do want to get to some breaking news this morning. San Antonio firefighters on the scene of an apartment fire at a complex on the city's northwest side. Alyssa Cole is there joining us live. So Alyssa, we know you just received information on this fire a few moments ago. So what do you know so far? Yes, good morning, Max, Sarah. As you mentioned, I am here on the northwest side on Braze View near Northwest Military. This is the Castle Hills area. We don't have the formal name of this apartment complex right now, but I am in an apartment complex. Fire crews still on scene, SAPD still on scene, but they are wrapping up and they're on their way out because we did learn it was a small apartment fire. It was contained to just one apartment unit on the second floor. They don't know the cause yet. They're still working to find out exactly what it is. Um, it shouldn't take very long because it was a small fire. There was someone inside of the unit at the time that it happened, and they said that um, that person wasn't uh, seriously injured, but they did uh, experience some smoke in inhalation. So they were treated on scene uh, with paramedics for that, but they weren't taken to the hospital. But the big, big takeaway from this after talking to the first responders here, it's all about making sure that your smoke detector those batteries are up to date because unfortunately in this situation that wasn't the case the smoke detector did not go off that person unfortunately suffered from the smoke inhalation and their message to others is just make sure that those batteries are up to date make sure that your smoke detector is operating properly because of course it could be the very thing that makes the you know life or death decision for you depending on what the emergency situation is but for now reporting on the northwest side Alyssa Cole case at 12 news thank you Alyssa Top in your morning headlines, destruction and devastation in parts of the Deep South. Powerful storms and tornadoes swept through several states Friday night, killing over two dozen people. ABC's Morgan Norwood brings us the latest on recovery efforts. 
What used to be homes this morning now just scattered debris, barely recognizable after an intense storm and tornado outbreak hit parts of Mississippi and Alabama Friday night. We lost everything, but we got our life. This ain't good. We're in it. We are in the tornado right now. Wesley Jackson took this video as he drove through the tornado, then captured some of the devastation left in its wake. The storm leaving a path of destruction stretching more than 90 miles. The small towns of Silver City and Rolling Fork, Mississippi, both decimated. The National Weather Service confirming it was a powerful EF4 tornado. They were saying that it was a tornado was coming through Silver City. They were telling you to take cold, but it happened so fast. A lot of people didn't get a chance to take cold. Nine-year-old Derek Brady Jr. hid with his mother, seven-year-old sister, and other family members in a bathtub as a tornado destroyed their home in Rolling Fork. I kind of feel like the tornado just pushing me and pulling. I don't know what happened. The tornado just ran around the house and just tore it down. Tragically, not everyone survived. 56-year-old grandmother Mary Barfield Bush is among those killed. Her niece telling ABC News, Mary was a sweet and caring soul with a beautiful smile that lit up the room. ABC's Rob Marciano was in Rolling Fork as the sun came up. Now that the sun is getting higher in the sky, you're getting a, a real sense for just how much this town has been leveled. Some of these buildings you can't even make out. This is some sort of industrial a building completely flat. Mississippi's Governor Tate Reeves has issued a state of emergency for all of the counties affected by the storms. And President Biden promising the federal government will help. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Jackson, Mississippi. Other top headlines were following four people still missing after an explosion at a chocolate factory in Pennsylvania. Right now we know three people killed in the explosion. This is West Reading. It's about 60 miles northwest of Philadelphia. And take a look. This explosion happening just before 5 p.m. Friday at the R.M. Palmer Company plant. The blast destroying that one building you see on the screen, damaging another one nearby. There was a glimmer of hope in just the last few hours. One person pulled alive from the rubble overnight. Rescue crews still using dogs and imaging equipment to search through all of this aftermath. As for the cause, what caused this explosion? Investigators still working, trying to figure out how this all happened. Meanwhile, civil servants in France are no longer allowed to use entertainment apps on their work phones. The ban includes games and dating apps, streaming services, and content apps such as TikTok and Instagram. The French government says entertainment apps don't have the necessary level of cybersecurity and data protections. U.S. states are looking to pass similar laws in Congress banning TikTok from work devices. Time now, just about 6.08, 55 degrees out. Still to come on GMSA, the Texas Longhorns. Oh my goodness. They are the last Texas team standing in March Madness. It has been madness, to say the least. No one seat going to be in the wow. Final Four. Crazy. So will Texas still be alive after today? We're going to preview the matchup in the Elite Eight. And up next, millions of Texans are seeing their SNAP benefits cut this month. How that affects each household when they go to buy food. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. A picture perfect day out there yesterday. Are we going to see a repeat today? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. SNAP or the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as Food Stamps, offers food assistance for low-income individuals. So 79% of SNAP participants in Texas who access money for food through the Lone Star Deb Debit Card, they're actually families with children. And this month, 3.7 million Texans, they're going to see a big reduction from this pandemic-related relief. Every single SNAP recipient or household will see their Lone Star Card lose at least $95 this month. The average household will see a reduction of $212. SNAP benefits are adjusted for inflation. However, recipients and advocates for the program say these adjustments simply are not keeping up with the cost of food. Now, this is obviously a very detailed program. We have all the information right now. Head to KSAT.com. We also detail the ripple effect that we're seeing on our local food banks. Also over on KSAT.com, Galveston Island State Park celebrating a grand reopening after years long renovations following Hurricane Ike. The beach side of Galveston Island State Park reopened in June of 2022, but a big two day event will take place later this month to celebrate the reconstruction. You can find the latest on those festivities happening on KSAT.com.
I know, I'm excited about that. My folks actually live out in Galveston, so it'll be fun to go out there and visit them. Hopefully lots of days like what we saw yesterday. Yeah, I mean, yesterday was absolutely beautiful. I think it was definitely crowd-pleasing weather because I, I can't tell you how many people I saw out and about yesterday soaking up the sun, enjoying the low humidity. Today, we've already seen some clouds move in a little bit this morning, so that's going to be one of the big differences. We're starting off with some cloud cover out there. Take a look out uh, on uh, the uh, out in the live cam and actually I am seeing something on Transguide right now I just want to let the producers know 410 North at Ingram does look like there is a crash so we'll get on that soon and tell you about it but first let's talk about the weather outside right now 55 degrees in San Antonio again you can see that those clouds are moving in in Bandera it's 48 43 in Kerrville 43 in Comfort 56 in Canyon Lake I'm showing you the nighttime satellite here because I want to show you that these low level clouds are really starting to push in from the Gulf. So you can see here in San Antonio starting to get those low level clouds. Meanwhile, it's uh, relatively clear up in the Austin area. So as we look at the future cast, these low level clouds are going to be with us through at least the mid to late morning. This is a snapshot of 11 o'clock this morning, and you can see out to the east near Gonzalez, Hallettsville, even uh, down toward Victoria, there is a small potential for an isolated sprinkle or two. But here in San Antonio, we'll stay dry and we are going to see sunshine into the afternoon. So mostly sunny skies in the afternoon. That's going to allow for our temperatures to really rise in the afternoon. So as I take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, temperatures are in the 50s right now. We're mostly cloudy. By 10, we'll be partly cloudy in the upper 60s. By noon, still some lingering clouds, 76. And then in the afternoon, 86 degrees for the high in San Antonio. Warmer than average by some 10 degrees. And it's going to be even warmer southwest of San Antonio. Take a look at these highs. 95 in Catula, 91 in Carissa Springs. Laredo is going to be at 96 today. 88 though in uh, Del Rio, 88 in Uvalde. It'll be 85 in Kerrville, 85 in Canyon Lake. And in the Hill Country, temperatures will be in the 80s generally as well. But it is going to be the warmest day today of the week ahead. In fact, we do expect a cool down. By Tuesday and Wednesday, our highs are only going to be in the low 70s, perhaps struggling to get out of the 60s and that's impressive given the fact that our average high is 76 so cooler than average by some 5 10 degrees but what about rain well let me show you in the weather setup what we've got going on there's the parent low to that colder air that's going to be pushing down to the south it's currently bringing some snowfall across parts of Nebraska and Iowa and take a look at how much colder this air is to the north of this front it's in the single digits right now in the Dakotas we are not going to get that cold we will not even get down into the 40s but this this is that source of cooler air that's going to allow for our temperatures to struggle to get out of the 60s on Tuesday and Wednesday. So let me take you through the future cast. That front is going to take its time getting here. It won't move through until Monday night. So Monday itself, another warm day, a few more clouds and even a few sprinkles, but no significant rain. 82 for the high on Monday. Then by Monday night into Tuesday morning, that front is going to be moving through. You can see that our future cast does hint at a few thunderstorms as as well very widely scattered in nature but even around San Antonio we could hear a few rumbles of thunder overnight Monday night into Tuesday coverage will not be great we're only talking about 30 percent but it is something that I want to put on your radar about 48 hours out from this event again Monday night into Tuesday and even for the morning commute there could be some dampness on Tuesday morning out on the road so let's put it all together in our planning forecast for you so again today 86 for the high going to be warm going to be pretty nice outside Monday 82 a few sprinkles and then Monday night into Tuesday that's when we'll have 30 percent coverage of storms those could linger into Tuesday morning Wednesday and Thursday uh, pardon me Tuesday and Wednesday will be cooler than average with a high near 70 and then as we look ahead there's another window for storms Thursday night into Friday again coverage is not great only up to 30 percent but it is a, a window of rainfall that I want us to keep our eye on and I'll talk a little little bit more in detail about that coming up in the next half hour. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now 617, 55 degrees out. Still ahead, the San Antonio Brahmas are hitting the road today for some revenge up in Arlington. What well, you need to know about today's matchup before kickoff that's happening on KSAT. Maybe we can get some wins. Who knows? Up next, Texas Longhorns. Speaking of wins, one win away from the final four. How they can get past Miami today in the Elite Eight. 
Morning and welcome back. And hey, how about those Longhorns? They are still alive in March Madness. They are the top remaining seed left in the field heading into the Elite Eight. So take a look. Texas rolling past Xavier Friday night in the Sweet 16. They won 83-71. They did it without their best player. He had a foot injury. So they look calm. They look collected. They look cool. Three rounds in the book. So how are they so successful? I think it goes back to our age and the veterans we have on the team. There's the guys in this room that have lived a lot outside of basketball and played a lot of basketball as well. And, you know, we go down against Penn State a couple points. Some teams would, you know, freeze up and the moment would be too big. But we've got big time players that are able to get the game back. And we're having a lot of fun playing with each other. We don't want it to end and we want the season to go all the way. So, speaking of going all the way, will they? Here's the Elite Eight matchup for today. Horns taking on... The U, Miami today, 405 T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, Missouri. Winner moving on to the Final Four next weekend in the Lone Star State. It's going to be in Houston. University of Houston no longer in it. So looking at other scores in the Elite Eight in the East region, Florida Atlantic run continues. I'm going to give a shout-out to Kansas State alum Ben Spicer on our web team. FAU beat K-State yesterday. It's crazy. The Owls didn't have a win in the tournament prior to the season. Now they are the second nine seed ever to advance to the Final Four. And in the West region, UConn taking down the Zags, really dismantling them. 82-54, they're back in the Final Four for the first time in nine years. So, Sarah, do you I have anyone you're rooting for? Well, of course. The Longhorns. I'm right. not even a UT girl, but I'm a Texas girl. Okay. Hey, so who do you think are going to be in the final two matchup? Oh. You, you called the Horns to win the whole thing. I did You've say been that. You've that for a while, actually. I did, so we'll see. Like, they won their first, their first game. You're like, the Horns are taking it. That so <laughs> happened they beat Penn State. Uh. But here we are. Uh, you know what? We'll tease ahead. In the 8 o'clock, you stay with us through the morning. I'll tell you the final matchup. Okay. There we go. But for now, time is 623, 55 degrees now. Just ahead before 630, the San Antonio Brahma is looking for revenge uh. today against the last team who beat them in the Alamo Dome. What you need to know before kickoff, which is airing right here on KSAT. San Antonio Brahmas have a rare opportunity for some immediate revenge this weekend. All right, so one week after that tough 12 to 10 loss to the Renegades in the Dome, the Brahmas have a rematch this afternoon in Arlington. So, Jack starting at QB in the last matchup, offensive coordinator Jimmy Johnson took over play calling duties, but the Brahmas slowed down by injuries. They struggled again on offense. As you can tell, they only scored 10 points. So we asked head coach Heinz Ward about his OC's performance, and this is what he said. I like some of the things we were doing offensively, you know, um, spreading the ball out, uh, opening up some running lanes. Um, you know, him and I talk, we, we do want to run the ball a little more. Uh, just to be able to control, um, you know, the time of possession. So you can watch the Brahmas this afternoon right here on KSAT 12. Kickoff set for 2 p.m. and we'll have all the highlights on instant replay tonight at 11. Also looking ahead, the Spurs continuing that East Coast road trip, taking on the Boston Celtics up in Boston, silver and black. Looking to end a three-game losing streak, tip-off set for 5 p.m., and you know what? I'm just going to say it. Optimistic about this team. And I think what we've been doing has been really great. Losing We're... so we can get the number one. So here's the thing. <laughs> we've been so competitive for like the first three and a half quarters and then miraculously lose. So we're seeing all this talent. We're seeing Keldon Johns with 30-point games. And we can still get a top three pick. Come on, Spurs. Let's do it. Go Spurs, go. Just about 628, 56 degrees out. Still ahead at 630. It's been a year since that massive wildfire ripped through Medina County. The lessons learned by firefighters and the changes made one year later. Plus, my pain would never leave me because that was my only daughter. San Antonio family says they're on the path to healing after a man is finally charged in the death of their daughter. The latest on the case end the latest on the family's journey towards peace. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Sunday, 631 this morning. It is March 26th. Thank you so much for joining us. So yesterday, you got to work on the garden yeah. and probably got some sunshine. Oh, Max, you know me. I'm, Big I'm, hat, I'm, I, sun, sun jacket. Sun, sunscreen. Yeah. Sunscreen's important just because yeah. it's not like 
95 degrees with humidity. Yeah, but yesterday I feel like it was pretty clear that you needed sunscreen, Sarah Spivey. Absolutely. Tons of sunshine yesterday and today, even though we're starting off with clouds, we will see sun by the end of the day, especially in the afternoon. So it's going to be another warm one for us. A great way to end the weekend. Take a look outside with live cam. You can see that those clouds have moved in. It is 55 degrees at the airport, 58 at since and 56 at Kelly and a cool 52 at JBSC Randolph near Converse. Otherwise, uh, we are going to be seeing mostly cloudy skies for most of this morning, but temperatures will be warming up nicely too. We'll be at 67 by 10, 76 around noon, and for the high temperature today, 86. Just for reference, yesterday we were at 83, so just a little bit warmer today in the forecast. But today is going to be the warmest day of the week ahead. In fact, we do expect a cool down on Tuesday and Wednesday behind a front. Now these double dose of cold fronts will bring a chance for some rain here and there. So coming up, I'll walk you through the forecast when you'll most need the umbrella in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We're tracking a crash that involved multiple vehicles at 410 Westbound and Ingram. Those entire all the lanes of 410 westbound are shut down. They've been shut down since 2:30 this morning. Multiple cars involved. Uh, Trans guy did tell us someone was transferred to the hospital in serious condition. We don't have an update confirmed on that person's condition, but you can see at least two cars are being towed at this time. Hopefully, we'll clear up and reopen in the next half hour. Well, man, recovering this morning after first responders were able to rescue him from his apartment that was on fire. Alyssa Cole is live at that apartment complex where it happened on Brayview near Northwest Military Drive. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, Max, Sarah. Now we do have an update. We found out the name of this apartment complex is called the place of castle hills like you mentioned i am on the northwest side sarah the apartment unit that caught on fire so it's pretty dark out here but we're gonna pan the camera up and try to show you you'll probably see a little blue light there right above the red door the the windows are dark as well too it's a pretty dark area but of course that unit was the one that recently just caught on fire here's what we know when that fire broke out police actually arrived before the firefighters and it was the police officers that actually broke down the door and save the man and after we talked to firefighters um, of course they said it was a small fire they were able to get it out the man was collapsed right there at his front door actually trying to escape but it was the smoke inhalation that um, knocked him out uh, to be unconscious if you will now he was treated here at the scene um, for the smoke inhalation he wasn't taken to a hospital and firefighters uh, they were working to find out what caused the fire since it was such a small fire they have cleared out you can see it's pretty dark out here but the takeaway lesson from this that when we were talking to first responders when they were here earlier is to make sure that your smoke detectors are working. Make sure those batteries are up to date. You, it could just be the difference between a life and death situation. So if, even if you have the time today or maybe sometime this week, just to make sure that those batteries are working, just to make sure that it's operating, it's worth it. Reporting live on the northwest side, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. New details this morning on the migrants that were found trapped in that train car near Uvalde. Of the 17 people who were found, there were 15 men and two women. And when security investigators are now handling the case, they tell KSET two of the men pronounced dead at the scene, four others taken to area hospitals for treatment. Now, the migrants discovered Friday evening just before 4 p.m. after emergency dispatch received a call about several people trapped and suffocating inside this train. Two men were airlifted to University Hospital and both are still in critical condition. Krista Santa Rosa Hospital at Westover Hills has one patient and Methodist Hospital has two migrants that are in Border Patrol custody. And this weekend marks one year since the Das Goat fire broke out in Medina County. More than a thousand acres burned, including three homes. As Lee Waldman reports, the fire department that covers that region, they're working to be more prepared just in case the worst happens again. Um, and this is a ATV that is, you know, mocked up to be a fire truck and also a rescue vehicle. This vehicle can get where fire trucks cannot through the thick brush in the rural land across Medina County. It was a donation from a community grateful to their fire department. That's a fire that's going to affect this community for a long time. Last year, a car sparked the Dosco fire that burned for eight days. Three homes were destroyed in the High Mountain Ranch subdivision. 
1,092 acres still left in ashes. We still hadn't received a whole lot of rain, and so, you know, seeing this is a visual reminder that we still face a major risk in this area for wildfires. Chief Cook took us to Medina Lake. The water level shows just how dry things are. One thing working in their favor. They're fully stocked, fully equipped. There's New full-time firefighters like Lieutenant Ramon Martinez. Now that we're here, you know, we can help, you know, continue to build so that maybe we don't have that kind of fire, that big of a fire in the future. This is our fire dorm. Two fire stations in the area are now staffed with a minimum of four people 24-7. Since the Doscoat fire, the volunteer firefighter base has also increased by 40 people. We cover 250 square miles, and so right now we're doing it out of four stations. Two of them are fully staffed, and uh, but it, it just takes a little bit longer to get there. We got hoses here. Cook is confident the full-time firefighters can cut down on that time, but he says they need the community to help as well. With conditions similar to last year at this time, the wildfire risk is still high. You know, burning any outdoor fires, it, it's a risk right now. And if you see anything, report it quick. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. A Bear County Sheriff's Office sergeant is facing possible termination after he was arrested for DWI while off duty. So we're talking about 37-year-old Juan Medrano charged with a DWI, a Class B misdemeanor, after being pulled over Saturday morning. It happened just after midnight at Babcock Road in Loop 410. BCSO officials say Medrano has been with them for 15 years and is currently assigned to the Detention Bureau. We'll bring you more updates to this story as they become available. A San Antonio family feeling one step closer to peace after a man finally charged for the death of their daughter who went missing nearly four years ago. A vigil held in Poteet for Tiffany Garza, who remains found in a burn pit behind a home in Atascosa County. However, it took researchers at two different universities to analyze the remains, which also included DNA of a suspect. A man arrested just last week Tiffany's mother speaking with us says she's grieving two losses, but finally on the path to healing. My pain would never leave me because that was my only daughter. And my son just passed away six months ago, you know, and his heart was so broken knowing that we weren't even getting justice. But I'm here to tell them too, that I never gave up on them. And you know, now we're gonna get our closure and we are gonna be at ease and we're gonna have peace. Being held at bond at Atascosa County Jail, $500,000 bond. Well, there's so much happening across our city covering a wide range of topics, and that is why today on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we have two Leading SA live interviews. We're going to hear from the Chief of Endocrinology Division at UT Health San Antonio. We're going to be discussing diabetes and issues specific to San Antonio. Then at 8.30, we're going to hear from Centro San Antonio's Economic Development Director, discussing all the amazing projects in the works in and around downtown, a new database where you can actually track the billions of dollars in local investments. If you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us later this morning, 8 a.m., for the full discussion. Time now, 640, 57 degrees out. Still head on GMSA, San Antonio FC back for a playoff rematch against Colorado. We have the last minute magic from last night at Toyota Field. Plus, a lot going on this weekend. You can go to an SFC, SAFC game. We're going to have a look at what's coming up in the next month here in the Alamo City. 57 degrees at 640 AM. Yesterday, we had perfect temps. Will we see a repeat? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Happening today, the San Antonio Roasted Corn Festival continues on the east side. It's a two-day free event that starts again at 11 this morning until 7 p.m. Elote has been a highlight of the festival so far. That's a traditional Mexican street food that's corn. It's roasted, then covered in mayo, cojita cheese, lime juice, cilantro, and chili powder. Folklorico dancers made an appearance Saturday along with the DJ. It's a pet-friendly event. Just make sure they're on leash and general parking is $5. And what a more perfect day to do it than yesterday and today. Speaking of which, San Antonio Zoo also hosting day two of the 8th Annual Monarch Fest. 
The fest is celebrating monarch butterflies, milkweed, and migration. Informational chats about plants, seed giveaways, and even photo opportunities still available. It goes on to 5 o'clock. Various activities. You can learn much more on the San Antonio Zoo's website. Also, we're going to keep throwing activities at you to do. Looking ahead, San Antonio Book Festival, it is only three weeks away. That's right, so the United Way SA will be accepting book donations now until April 20th. San Antonio personalities, athletes, and community leaders are all teaming up with United Way of San Antonio and Bear County for this year's Read United. There will be a book drive to help share the importance of literacy with other children in our community. Books can be purchased through United Way's Amazon gift list. You can find that by scanning this QR code on your screen right now. All right, so Sarah Spivey, so much going on in and around the Alamo City today. Good weather? Good weather. It's going to be warm, and unlike yesterday, we're going to be a little cloudier today. So we are starting off with clouds, but I want to start with a picture sent in through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. Take a look Aww. at these blue bonnets. It's nice, wow. but in the middle of your picture there is an all-white blue bonnet. Hmm. Oh, the cool. User says, check out the quote unquote ghost bonnet. <laughs> I like Pretty that. Neat. I've seen maroon <laughs> ones too. Texas A&M, <clears throat> Giga Maggie's, uh, ends up uh, actually making a maroon blue bonnet. So pretty neat there too. All right. Clouds have moved in this morning and temperatures are kind of all over the map. So up in Kerrville, it's 44, but it's 57 here in San Antonio. You know, uh, usually we see temperatures fall until sunrise, but we've actually seen the temperatures rise a little bit around San Antonio this morning as those clouds have moved in and kind of acted like a blanket. Uh, 59 in Pleasanton and 64 in Catula. As we zoom in a little bit closer to the Alamo City, you can see up I-10 just how much colder it is. 45 in Bernie and even up 281, 48 in Bulverde this morning. 59 in Hondo and 58 at Simpson. As we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy through this morning, but temperatures will be on the rise, 67 at 10. Around noon, we'll already be in the mid to upper 70s. And then in the afternoon, we are going to see mostly sunny skies. So the clouds will clear and we're going to be able to get up to 86 degrees for the high in San Antonio. Even hotter southwest, it'll be 95 in Catula, 96 in Laredo, near 90 degrees in Beeville, 83 in Gonzales, 88 in Uvalde, 88 in Del Rio. Curvelli will be at 85. Our average high this time of year is 76, so we're going to be warmer than average by some 10 degrees or so. New Braunfels, 85 for the high, 88 in Hondo, 87 in Bandera, 84 in Bulverde, 88 in Sabinal, 86 in Nixon Smiley. Now, as we take a look at the weather setup across the nation, we've got some severe storms rolling through parts of Alabama and Georgia and even into South Carolina this morning. Of of course, this area in Mississippi ravaged by a tornado just a couple of days ago. But to our north is a low pressure system bringing some snow to parts of Iowa. Now behind this low pressure system is some really cold air. And although we're not going to see temperatures get into the 40s, we are going to pull some of this cooler air south. And so it will become cooler during the middle part of the week. We'll talk about that in a bit. But first, I want to walk you through the future cast. So to Tomorrow, that front is still going to be to our north. We'll be able to get up to 82. It's going to be a warm one and mostly cloudy. Uh, we will see a few sprinkles here and there, but no significant rain. And then by Monday night, tomorrow night into Tuesday morning, this is a snapshot at midnight, tomorrow night into Tuesday morning, I do anticipate a few rumbles of thunder locally. Coverage will not be widespread. We're only looking at about 30% coverage for the showers and thunder showers, but the chance is there to to see some rain Monday night into Tuesday through San Antonio and up in the hill country as well. Coverage again about 30 percent and we, this will start a trend where we're going to have at least a chance for some isolated rain through most of the week. So tomorrow night, Monday night into Tuesday, 30% chance for some storms. Tuesday through Thursday, only about a 20% chance for an isolated shower. But then by Thursday night, another round of isolated to widely scattered storms is possible. And we could use the rain. It has been 53 days since we've seen half an inch of rainfall 
at the airport. 214 days since we've seen more than an inch of rain at the airport and a whopping 529 days since we have seen more than two inches of rain at the San Antonio International Airport within a 24 hour period. That's since October 13th of 2021. So even though our rain chances are small, 20 to 30 percent coverage, I'm hoping we can get some rain into the airport, although it doesn't look like we're going to be breaking that two inch <laughs> rainfall threshold anytime soon. By the way, that front Monday night to Tuesday, that brings us that 30% chance for storms, cools us down. Our highs will only be 70 on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 650, 58 degrees out. All right, up next, SAFC looking to keep their win streak alive in front of the home crowd. A huge play from our star keeper making the biggest difference. We're going to explain just a bit. Also, I wanted to give you guys an update at that crash that involved multiple vehicles that happened at 2.30 this morning. It looks like police have opened up a couple of lanes now. It was completely shut down. That is 410 and Ingram westbound. We know that one person has been taken to the hospital. Hopefully they will clear this incident in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio FC returning to the pitch at Toyota Field last night for a Western Conference Finals rematch. Of course, taking on Colorado Springs switchbacks. No score until the 83rd minute. Zico Bailey shot deflected up in the air right to Muhammad Abu. Heads it past the outstretched arm of the keeper for the opening goal. San Antonio taking that 1-0 lead. Not out of danger just yet, though. Switchbacks aware. Oh, penalty kick on the hand. Final minute of stoppage, and look at that. Jordan Farr says no. The reigning USL goalkeeper of the year slamming the door shut with a diving save. SAFC wins the rematch 1-0. They are 6-0-2 all-time against Colorado Springs at home. Now own a 20-match unbeaten streak. Really just amazing to talk about at Toyota Field. Still early in the season. And before we go to break, Sarah Costa, look at this. Yeah. Homer, spring training, looks like a routine situation in the outfield. The ball hopping the grass, but take a closer look at the camera, zooming in. That's a dog right there. The dog catching the home run ball <laughs> right in his mouth. What a play. I'm hoping this gets like a top 10 play on SportsCenter. I, I think uh, he is a good boy and good deserves. Boy. He was waiting. He was waiting a whole game. It's probably his whole life for that. Yeah. <laughs> He was focused in. Absolutely. All right, time now. Just about 6.55, 58 degrees out. We'll be right back. Before we go, Fiesta, it's upon us, and KSAT is kicking it off with a KSAT Insider contest. KSAT Insiders now have a chance to be a royal for a day. This will give you the opportunity to ride in the parade. What? with their own court and get some extra prizes. We have all this information on your screen right now. If you can't read all of it, head to ksat.com. And are you guys planning on going to Poteet for the famous strawberry festival? I want to, yeah. Please bring us back some of the bins. The 2023 schedule has been bins released. Bins full of strawberries. Bins full of strawberries. <laughs> the green ones. They're actually like littered across the newsroom. So it's been posted for you right now. Just head to ksat.com. We have a full list of the artists, all the details on the wristband flash sale happening this weekend. Just look for the story right on our homepage. Tomorrow on GMSA, as we wrap up Women's History Month, we're shining spotlight on legendary Olympian Allison Felix why she's making history off the track as for an advocate for maternal health care. All right, so we've got some clouds that have moved in now, but we are going to see sun, especially in the afternoon. It'll be a warm one, 86, but today will likely be the warmest of the week ahead. Tomorrow, warm, a few sprinkles here and there, but by Monday night to Tuesday, a front's going to move through. That's our first window for storms. Only 30% coverage, but it will cool us down Tuesday and Wednesday. By the way, Tuesday is going to be very windy, so keep mm. that in mind. We'll warm up again by Thursday, and then Thursday night into Friday, another opportunity for only about a 30% coverage of storms. All right, Terrence Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this morning. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Smoke and flames filling a Northwest apartment. We have the latest from the scene, including a daring rescue. One man now recovering. 
And in just a few minutes in today's leading essay segment, we will be speaking with a local endocrinologist focusing on what you need to know about diabetes, the risks, the symptoms, and the problems specific to our community. And speaking of our community, taking a live look out there. All right, a little, a little bit of haze to start the morning. Yesterday, picture perfect out there. Will we see more sunshine throughout the day? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Good morning. Did you make it outside yesterday? You are glowing. Thank you. You're like the sunshine of the newsroom. I try to be the sunshine of the newsroom. Each and every day. And so of our you, viewers <laughs> as well. <laughs> did you get some sunshine yesterday? I did. It was beautiful outside. And Sarah Spivey, I know that you and your husband took a walk on the river walk. We did. It was gorgeous yesterday. We saw a lot of people out and about as well, soaking up the sun. We're starting off, though, the day with some clouds, as was expected, but we will see sun in the afternoon. Outside right now, it is cloudy at the San Antonio International Airport. It's 59 degrees out there. And winds are from the northwest at about five miles per hour. Temperatures are kind of all over the map. And the reason for that is overnight those clouds have moved in. So clouds, they act like a blanket and keeping areas warm, uh, warmer that have the cloud cover like uh, San Antonio International Airport. But up in Kerrville, where there's just some height in cirrus clouds, it's 46, 43 in Comfort, 50 in Bandera, 51 in Seguin, and 62 in Divine. As we take a look at your forecast for the day today, even though it's cloudy right now, we are going to see sun around noon. It'll be 76 under partly cloudy skies. And then in the afternoon, mostly sunny skies, 86 for the high, a warm day for us with light and variable winds. However, today going to be the warmest day of the next seven days. In fact, we've also got a look at some rain chances on the horizon as well. Details in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A local man recovering this morning after being rescued from an overnight fire at his apartment on the city's northwest side. So take a look. This was the scene earlier this morning. The San Antonio Fire Department on the scene telling us they saw heavy flames and smoke showing from one of these apartments. This complex near Braysview and Northwest Military Drive. SAPD managing to bust through the door, get the man out safely before the fire was able to spread. That man treated on the scene. He is expected to be okay. As for what caused this, the extent of the damage, we do expect more information throughout the day. So make sure to stay with us online and on air as those updates become available. And we have learned new information on the migrants that were found trapped in that train car near Uvalde. 17 that were found, there were 15 men and two women. So all of this, the latest information from the Homeland Security, they're still investigating and they're still telling us how they're handling the case. Two of the men pronounced dead on the scene, four others taken to local area hospitals for treatments. Now, the migrants discovered Friday evening just before 4 p.m. This after an emergency dispatch received a call about several people trapped and suffocating inside the train. Well, two men were airlifted to University Hospital. Both are still in critical condition. Krista Santa Rosa Hospital at Westover Hills has one patient, and Methodist Hospital has two. Three migrants are in Border Patrol custody. And a Bear County Sheriff's Office sergeant in Bear County Jail this morning after he was arrested for DWI while off duty, 37 year old Juan Medrano is charged with DWI, a Class B misdemeanor, and is facing possible termination after being pulled over early yesterday morning. It happened at Babcock Road and Loop 410. BCSO officials say Medrano has been with them for 15 years and is currently assigned to the Detention Bureau. His bond is set at $1,200. Well, we're big fans of Morgan's Wonderland. They do so many great things for our community. And this morning, they're actually teaming up with another organization. They are teaming up with Project MEND. They're raising money for medical equipment to benefit those who are living with disabilities. Our Alyssa Cole is there live and joins us now to tell us more about it. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, Max, Sarah. That's exactly right. I hear you all fired up over there. We're fired up too, excited about this great, great project. Now, let me break down what MEND means. MEND means Medical Equipment Network for Those with Disabilities. And joining me this morning is CEO of Project MEND, Kathy Valdez. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. And, you know, of course, we, we would like to know, how do you all acquire equipment and make it affordable for others? 
So really easy. We, we pick up donated equipment from individuals, maybe people that have it in the garage, don't know what to do with it, uh, from medical equipment companies that maybe have extra or excess that's on hand, uh, and they donate that to us as well as, you know, rehab clinics or hospitals or assisted living centers. Uh, we refurbish it, repair it, get it ready to go out uh, to individuals that just don't have a way to get it on their own. Um, our application fee is just a $20 one-time yearly application fee to come in and access that equipment. And what you all are doing is so important and so significant in the community. And you all have been around for a while and making a difference, correct? Yes, ma'am. For 30 years. This marks our 30th year anniversary. Yeah. That's wonderful. And the, my last question, I'll let you go because I know you all have the big 5K underway. If you could just talk about how you all are doing today. We know there was a lot of shortages with medical, medical equipment throughout the lockdown with the pandemic. We're kind of we're coming out of that now. How are things looking today? You know what? We were really, really uh, smart. Uh, uh, when uh, the pandemic hit because we had just set ourselves up to be able to work from home. So our we, we didn't have to miss a beat. So we were able to make sure that we were delivering safely, both keeping our um, uh, delivery staff safe as well as the clients uh, safe by doing curbside delivery as well as curbside pickup. So everybody has proper PPE anyway because we're required to do that. So it became just a, a non-issue for us. We were very fortunate. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking out the time to speak with us. And then people looking to be a part of Project Mend and donate, we'll have those uh, details on our website later at ksat.com. I'll send it back to you, Max Sierra. Thank you. Well, one in six San Antonians has type 2 diabetes, and a third of San Antonians are pre-diabetic. March 28th is Diabetes Alert Day, a one-day wake-up call that focuses on the seriousness of diabetes and the importance of understanding your risk. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Carolina solis Chief of Endocrinology at UT Health San Antonio. Good morning, doctor. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Good morning, Max Sarah. Thank you for having me. So just to start off, can you explain the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Of course, uh, type 1 diabetes is a disorder where you develop antibodies against your pancreas, which is the organ that produces insulin and lowers your glucose. It's more common in children, and it's about 5% of all the diabetes that we see. Type 2 diabetes is the most common form of diabetes. It's about 95% of all the forms of diabetes, and it's the one that is associated uh, with some risk factors that we will discuss in a few minutes. Um, but uh, that is more a form of insulin resistance when you generally are sedentary, overweight, and you have family history of diabetes. So according to the CDC, more than half of Hispanics, Latino adults are expected to develop type 2 diabetes in their lifetime. So why is that? So we believe that in part is genetics. Uh, diabetes is a very polygenetic disease. Uh, so in minorities, in Hispanics, African-Americans, of course, in San Antonio, about 60% of the population is Hispanic. So all of us, uh, you know, most of us are at risk. Uh, if you have history of being overweight or obese, and about 70% of Americans are overweight and about 50% of Americans are obese, so most of us are at risk. Uh, if you have a brother, a sister, a father, a mother with type 2 diabetes, if you're not active, you're sedentary, you exercise less than a couple of times a week, if you have a history of having a baby more than nine pounds, um, or probably you have gestational diabetes, you're a very high risk of developing diabetes. And all these people need to check themselves uh, probably annually just to make sure that they don't have prediabetes or diabetes. So other than, you know, genetics, what should people look out for, not only with risk factors, but also symptoms? Absolutely. So the problem about diabetes, just like high blood pressure and other disorders, is that you don't have too many symptoms until your disorder is very uncontrolled. But if you're very thirsty, fatigued, you're gaining or losing weight, craving a lot of sugars, uh, and uh, those are mainly the things that going very frequently to the bathroom, urinating a lot, that should alarm you. Uh, also, they get very thirsty. Uh, and those are the main symptoms uh, for uncontrolled diabetes. 
And we know there has been an Ozempic craze, people using the drug to help them lose weight, which led to a shortage and making it difficult with people who have diabetes that need that drug and being able to get to those semi-glutide injection medications. So are we still seeing a shortage of Ozempic here in San Antonio? And what should people be aware of before taking the drug for weight loss? Mm -hmm. So semaglutide, which is the component inside of Ozempic, is available in three forms. Uh, two are approved for diabetes. One is a tablet and one is the injectable Ozempic that has been all over the media. And then one is called Wegovi, which is FDA approved for weight management, weight loss for obesity. Uh, so what the people need to know is there's still a little bit of a shortage but it's getting a lot better. Uh, when uh, we struggled the most was the months of November, December, January, uh, but the company uh, is pretty much uh, resupplying uh, all over the United States and it's, it was actually a global uh, uh, problem. Um, but we are uh, being able to get more of that medication. Also, if we see that the patient cannot get Ozempic, you can put them on the tablet, which is the same semaglutide and that one doesn't have a shortage. Uh, so just uh, call your doctor and they'll be able to give you a solution to the problem. There are also mm -hmm. other weekly injectables that um, are from the same family and have about the same effects. And they can switch you to a different brand if uh, you cannot find it. The only thing that we really want to bring awareness to the population that is really important is that in social media, we have seen this mock-up of semaglutide which is like $25. Uh, we don't know where it's coming from. It's a powder, uh, it's a reconstituted powder in a vial. Even some um, uh, people, influencers, et cetera, have shown in social media. We do not endorse it and we do not recommend our patients to take it. Well, thank you so much, doctor, for your time. I know there's a lot of people with questions out there, uh, but our viewers, you can watch this interview full uh, later this morning on ksat.com. Time now, 812, 60 degrees out. Well, the French government has made a big announcement regarding entertainment apps on their work phones. More on what that is and how it affects government workers. That's still ahead on GMSA. And a local nonprofit unionizing after months of waiting next, what members of CAC are saying about the next steps. 60 degrees at 812 this morning. Hey, yesterday was a perfect day to be outside. Is it another repeat of that? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. From Starbucks to Amazon, in recent years we've seen more organizations try to unionize and for one local organization, they've entered the ring. They say it's been a battle for an after-school nonprofit, SACI, trying to unionize. SACI union members say they've been trying to do this for the nonprofit since October of last year. Now, after months, they're officially unionized, but they believe there is still more, more work to be done. So workers' compensation is one issue being brought up, and another is workers would like to be involved in future programming that the board proposes. In order to create healthy programming, you need to know the perspective of the people in the trenches. Union members are now developing a workers' contract to present to the board sometime next month. Their after-school programming has not been impacted by the unionizing process. All right, so the talk of the morning, a lot of it, the gorgeous weather from yesterday. Oh, my goodness, it was so nice outside, and those waking up right now may take a peek outside and be like, because there's some clouds, but the thing is, the clouds are going to clear up, and it is going to be a pretty nice Okay, day. yeah. So if you weren't, didn't have a chance to get out yesterday, this afternoon, still beautiful. Absolutely, and actually the warmest day of the next seven days for us. So let's get talking about the weather. Outside right now, as you can see, those clouds have moved in at the airport. It's 59 degrees right now, and uh, dew points are still pleasantly low in the 40s. What I'm showing you right here is the satellite picture. You can actually see the sun rising uh, there on uh, the right-hand side of your screen. but. As you're taking a look out towards San Antonio, you can see these low level clouds have been pushing in in the last hour or so. And so as we take a look at the future cast, these low level clouds are going to be with us through at least about 11 or even toward noon. We could even see an isolated shower east of San Antonio toward Howlettsville. But by the afternoon, mostly sunny skies. And again, we're going to warm up really nicely today once we see that sunshine. So taking a look at the KSAT 12 hour forecast, still cloudy at 9, clouds will start 
start to clear up a little bit by 10 and we'll be looking at partly cloudy skies around noon, 76 degrees around noon. And then in the afternoon, we'll be back into the 80s with mostly sunny skies and a high right near 85, close to 5 p.m. Then later on tonight, we'll have mostly clear skies and temperatures back into the 70s. But if you live southwest of San Antonio, it is going to be even warmer. Take a look at the forecast highs for Catula Laredo, mid 90s, close to 100 degrees in Laredo, 88 in Del Rio, 81 in Rock Springs. It'll be 83 in Gonzales, 85 in Kerrville, 85 Canyon Lake, New Braunfels area, and then up to about 81 in Rock Springs. But as I mentioned today, the warmest day of the forecast period for us will still be warm tomorrow, but by Tuesday and Wednesday, our highs are only going to be in the upper 60s, low 70s. So a bit of a cool down in the middle of the week. And with that front comes the potential for at least a couple of storms. Take a look at the weather setup across the nation. There are uh, tornado watches, severe thunderstorm watches for areas in Alabama and in Georgia. It was just a couple of days ago that Mississippi was hit with a couple of tornadoes, unfortunately. But our next system is up to the north. Low pressure is moving across and this cold air behind this cold front is slowly going to be making its way south. We are not going to get down into the 20s. We're not going to get down to the 30s. We're not even going to get down into the 40s. But this cold air is going to uh, at least allow our highs to drop down into the 60s and uh, low 70s. As you take a look at the future cast for your day tomorrow, it'll be a warm one, 82, mainly a cloudy day. I can't rule out a few sprinkles, but that is going to be inconsequential to your day. But that front will be moving through Monday night into Tuesday. Take a look at the future cast. This is a look at midnight tomorrow night into Tuesday morning. There will be a few isolated showers and storms Monday night into Tuesday. Coverage is only going to be about 30%, but you can see that this particular model does bring at least some of that rain through the San Antonio metro area. Again, 30% coverage. Not everybody is going to see rain, but you could hear a few rumbles of thunder while you're sleeping Monday night into Tuesday. Again, that's going to cool us down and just about every single day of this upcoming week, we're going to have a chance for at least isolated rain. So keep that umbrella in the back of your car. Keep it handy. It's going to be windy on Tuesday behind that front. We'll see gusts up to 35 miles per hour. After that chance for storms Monday night into Tuesday, we have another window Thursday night into Friday. Again, no major rainmakers for us but at least something to keep our eye on and uh, hope that our rain gauges get filled up a little bit. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Just about 821, 61 degrees out. Coming up next, a look at some upcoming events that you can do with your family around San Antonio. We'll have that for you when we come back. Welcome back. The famous light show at San Fernando Cathedral is back after a brief hiatus. The free light show will be projected onto the cathedral in downtown San Antonio every Tuesday through Sunday at 9 p.m. and again at 9.30 p.m. The shows last around 24 minutes. It portrays the historical discovery, the settlement and development of San Antonio and the state of Texas. Now, the U.S. is funding the art project. It is Designed by the French painter, it has been wowing visitors since it debuted all the way back June of 2014. Have you seen this? Yeah, one time I was walking around <laughs> and I was like, what is that? Oh, it's beautiful. No, it really is It's amazing. really cool. It's really cool. It brings people downtown and it's free. Who doesn't love free stuff? I recommend it. Absolutely. Time now, 825, 61 degrees out. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, three, four, fireball five, daily four. 6602 Fireball 3. And your cash 5, 15, 17, 31, 32, 33. Lotto Texas 4, 29, 35, 41, 49, 52. Here we go. Power roll, did you play? No, I wish I did. What is it at? I don't, I don't remember. More than 100 million? I can't remember. I'm going to oh, look it up. Okay, we'll look it up. We'll get back to you. If you did play, here are your numbers 15, 17, 18, 47, 57. Powerball 19, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and a happy Sunday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is March 26th. It's been beautiful the last <laughs> it's couple been of days. Amazing. So you I, I just want to freeze time. What what is like your your line of demarcation for too hot? Mm, well, it depends on humidity. Okay. So we Good didn't response. have a lot of humidity yesterday. Right. So I could do like the low 80s, 84. So generous. You could do the low 80s. 85, maybe too much. <laughs> 
82. I think 82 is probably my... Spivey, opinion. is Sarah Costa in luck today? <laughs> How does 86 sound, Sarah? Oh, uh, yeah. Humidity. What's the humidity? What's my bargain? In the afternoon, the humidity will be a little low. Okay, then I can, we can do that. Okay. All right, good. I'm glad that this forecast has been Sarah Costa approved. <laughs> All right, outside though, right now we are seeing clouds this morning and those clouds, you know, may be a little discouraging to some folks, but don't worry, we are going to see the sun later on today. It's uh, 60 degrees at the airport, but 63 at Simpson, 60 at Kelly and uh, 57 at JBSA Randolph. We started off at around 52 degrees in San Antonio. So temperatures have been able to warm and we're currently seeing things warm up even even more. We're still going to see clouds with us through a good portion of this morning. All uh, those skies will be starting to clear around noon when it'll be 76. And then in the afternoon, we'll be in the 80s, so a warm one, and then 86 for the high. And uh, around that time, it'll be a little noticeably humid, but not all that bad outside. And again, this is going to be the warmest day of the week. So we are expecting cool down Tuesday and Wednesday with highs only in the upper 60s, low 70s. But with these these fronts comes the potential at least for a little bit of rain. So coming up, I'll walk you through the rain forecast in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. It's been just over a year since a massive wildfire burned in Medina County and destroyed three homes. The Das Goat Fire burned for eight days after it was sparked by a vehicle on the side of the road. 1,092 acres were left in ashes. Medina County ESD-1 Fire Chief Clint Cook says two fire stations in the area are now staffed with a minimum of four people 24-7. Since the Das Goat Fire, the volunteer firefighter base has also increased by 40 people. We cover 250 square miles, and so right now we're doing it out of four stations. Two of them are fully staffed, and uh, but it, it just takes a little bit longer to get there. Well, Cook is confident the full-time firefighters can cut down on that time. He says the wildfire risk is still high. Any burning can be dangerous. All right, so if you've been around downtown recently, you've for sure noticed the construction, the cranes, and the big projects. San Antonio continues to grow, especially in our urban core. A big part of that growth, Centro San Antonio. That's right, so joining us in our second part of today's Leading Essay segment is Sarah Esterlu Khalil, Economic Development Director for Centro San Antonio. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. So, Sarah, there's a new, honestly, exciting database. We've been playing with it through the morning. It tracks the billions of dollars in investment in our city. So why is this public database so important? Yeah, so thank you for uh, thank you for having me. We um, have been working for about a year to build this tool, but really this comes about because we've had a lot of construction and a lot of questions about that construction because there is public projects. A lot of those are the streets. There's also a lot of private construction and it kind of we wanted to have a way to see it easily and to demystify some of the construction. So you can see here he talks about the projects. They're broken down by uh, private and public. Um, and if you scroll down, this is my favorite part. You can look at and you see all the filters on top. You can look at any one of those projects. Um, you can look at the different areas that are kind of growing the most in our downtown at the top. You'll see Broadway Hemisphere. Um, also Alamo and Zona Cultural UTSA, and kind of all the different parts of the downtown. Um, and the fun part also is if you click into any one of those dots, you can get more information about that project. And so if you're curious about a very specific thing you might have heard about, you can find it on this map and you can find out more information. That is so cool because I know when I'm driving, I'm like, oh, what's that going to be? <laughs> what is that lot going to be? And now you have your answer. So like we're talking yep. about San Antonio is literally and uh, also physically on the rise. So what is the goal for the project in the downtown area? For this specific project, we just wanted it to be a tool that is open for the public, um, for anyone. So you don't need to be sophisticated and know all this you know, terminology about development or construction, you can just go to the tool and kind of click into it. Also, um, we when we talk to businesses and they're considering maybe opening a location downtown, they wanna be able to know what exactly is going on and what can they count on in the coming years as far as um, office workers or 
tourism or more residents downtown to know if it's a good spot for them to open. So we wanted this tool to be broad, open to kind of the, the investment and business community, but also for the public that's just curious about construction downtown. And speaking of construction downtown, you know, speaking with Central San Antonio CEO and President Matt Brown, he talked about extensively about downtown 2.0. Obviously, it is so intriguing. So what can we as a community expect in terms of more big downtown projects? Yeah, so I think it's important to know a lot of these projects have taken maybe a decade to come online. So you're seeing construction now, but the groundwork was laid years and years ago. So we're finally seeing kind of the, the fruits of our efforts. And um, the kind of the bigger projects downtown, if you think about Hemisphere, that's a game changer. If you think about the Alamo, I mean, the state is involved and it's going to be wrapping up right around 2026. If you kind of move a little bit further west, UTSA is making a huge investment in our downtown move a little for the north robbery corridor we're still seeing improvements along uh, the museum reach um, and kind of river north connecting sort of the the pearl and the downtown core to together and you kind of start starting to see these kind of things kind of come about on the south lone star has been kind of slow to start but once that goes that'll pull a lot of investment south but there's just there's a lot there are a lot of really great projects out there and even if you're looking a little bit further east past the highway velocity texas trtf the innovation district you'll find the information on that on our website a little bit further south st paul square there are a lot of great things happening in our downtown Okay, so a lot when you're driving in the downtown area and you're seeing those new projects go up, I know a lot of them are residential buildings, mm -hmm. apartments. So why is it important? Why is there an initiative to bring more people to live in the San Antonio downtown area? It's a long and complicated answer, but there are a few reasons. One is that walkability and that vitality can only come about if there are more residents to support the retail. And what we saw in the pandemic was you know, hospitality and office kind of went away for a couple of years and that made it really hard for the resident population downtown. Um, there, there weren't as many residents in our downtown and some other downtowns, it was really the residents that kept their downtown alive. We're seeing hospitality come back in a big way. That's fantastic. Office remains kind of a new challenge, um, but we are seeing more apartments and um, downtown can be a very livable place. It's the best, most urban environment we have. The Pearl is fantastic. Southtown is great. But the core is really built around kind of that walkability. Um, you have the river walk and you have a lot of other great things that have come up. I mean, Legacy Park, and when the weather is great, you want to go over there and hang out. When Civic Park opens, um, hopefully later this year, uh, you can go and hang out on the lawn as well. And it's just there's a lot to do in this very kind of urban, walkable environment that we have. All right, Sarah with Central San Antonio, thank you so much. Made Legacy Park and Pinkerton sound like breakfast of champions. We really appreciate your time. <laughs> Anyone who missed any of the interview, we can check it out throughout the morning. Just head to KSAT.com. Now to former President Trump's first campaign rally since announcing his 2024 run. And it all happened here in Texas, specifically in Waco. ABC's Rachel Scott was there and has more. Overnight, a defiant Donald Trump taking the stage at his first major rally of his 2024 campaign in Waco, Texas. The former president dismissing a possible indictment, telling his supporters he's done nothing wrong. From the beginning, it's been one witch hunt and phony investigation after another. The Manhattan District Attorney is investigating Trump's alleged hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. There's several investigations looming over the former president, a possible indictment. Does that change anything when it comes to your support for him? Uh, actually, it makes me support him more because it's a witch hunt. <laughs> it doesn't concern me at all. Trump is also facing a separate investigation into his actions leading up to January 6th, opening his rally with a video showing images of the deadly insurrection with people in prison for their actions singing the national anthem. Trump standing with his hand over his heart. The former president zeroing in on a potential challenger, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, and taking credit for his victory in 2018. But I did rallies for Ron that were massive rallies, and they were very successful. So we got him the nomination. We then got him the election. Trump saying he's not a big fan of DeSantis as the 2024 presidential race takes shape. 2024 is the final battle. That's going to be the big one. 
That was Elliot Scott reporting. The French government announced that the civil servants will no longer be allowed to use entertainment apps on their work phones. A ban prohibits game and dating app streaming services and content apps such as TikTok and Instagram. According to France's Ministry for Civil Services, entertainment apps that don't have the necessary level of cybersecurity and data protections. All right, there's always fun being had at Morgan's Wonderland, and this morning they're having a special type of fun. They're actually teaming up with another organization called Project MEND, raising money for medical equipment to benefit those who are living with disabilities. That's where we find our Alyssa Cole. She is live there. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, Max, Sarah. Yes, it's a great, great team effort going on here. And I just recently found out this is their second year doing this event. I mean, the way that things are set up, you would think they were doing this for a very long time. But joining me right now is the Project Mend, Project Mend Chairman, <laughs> Carrie Quackenbush. Good morning, Carrie. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And, you know, if you could just get into the details of uh, how people can donate those refurbished uh, medical equipment and things that they have to give to share with others. Absolutely. Uh, Project Men tries to make it as easy as possible to get the right medical equipment into the hands of the people who need it. So uh, for anybody who's looking to donate equipment, it's as simple as just going to projectmen.org uh, where they can click on the link to go donate equipment um, and then we make it very simple for them. Uh, it's as easy as setting up a pickup. Project Men will actually come out to you and pick up that equipment. Uh, make it as easy as possible for anybody who wants to get that equipment into the people's hands who need it. Uh, also, you can bring it by the warehouse, the brand new warehouse out off Forsbach. Uh, out in Leon Valley. Wonderful. And, and, you know, you all were talking about this wonderful work that you all have been doing in San Antonio for people all across Texas for 30 years, you all. 30 years, they've been helping people with disabilities, people who may have the inability to walk, helping them get the electric wheelchairs um, and what have you, all the different equipment. Just talk about that impact that you all have had and where you all are going forward. Absolutely. Uh, 30 years. I mean, it's been a long time. And, you know, it seems like such an obvious mission because so many people out there are going to need medical equipment at some point in their life. Someone you, you know, someone you love, someone you're caring for. So it's something that impacts everybody. So to be able to get the right equipment into the hands of the people who really need it, I mean, that is the gift of mobility. It's the gift of quality of life, right? So uh, it's taken us a, a, a it's been a great journey to get here these last 30 years, but with our new facility in place uh, and our new focus and, and a great board of directors behind it, a great staff, uh, we see nothing but uh, a great future for Project Men and just continuing to serve that mission of getting the right equipment into the right people's hands. Carrie, you know, I really appreciate you taking out the time to speak with us. Thank you so much and have fun today out there. You're welcome. You all, this is a wonderful, wonderful initiative. Again, I have been told this is their second race. Last year, they raised a little over 30000 This year, they're raising more than $70,000 to help people in need. So you all want to learn more about it. It's all online. It'll be on our website at ksat.com. For now, reporting live from Morgan's Wonderland, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank, Thank you, you, Alyssa. Time now, 843, 62 degrees out. Take a look outside with live cam. You know, those clouds are kind of hanging around this morning. 60 to 62 degrees at 843. Sarah Spivey says, hey, no fear. They will clear up later today. She'll let us know when we come back. Well, welcome back everyone. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Wanted to share this beautiful picture of the day yesterday. This is Ducky. He's enjoying the beautiful blue bonnets. And so, uh, yeah, it is going to be another nice day here for us. We do have a few more clouds out there though right now as we're starting off the day. And temperatures are kind of all over the map. So here's a look at, at the clouds. You can see that it's sunny still out in Del Rio and Carissa Springs. But around San Antonio overnight, we have had some clouds develop. Those clouds were late to the party for the hill country, just developing within the last hour or so. Low level clouds act as blanket in the overnight hours, and you can see that up in Kerrville and Comfort, it's a little bit cooler where that blanket has not been. It's 49 in Kerrville and 46 in Comfort, but it's 60 here in San Antonio. It's 59 at JBSA Randolph. These clouds are fairly thin, and so we're going to see them burn off pretty quickly, although most of the morning it is going to at least have some cloud cover with it. We'll be at 76 by noon and in the afternoon 
partly cloudy to mostly sunny, mostly sunny by about three and temperatures will soar into the upper 80s, 86 degrees for the high. Winds are generally going to be light and variable, maybe up to about five miles per hour, changing direction from the north to the south today. And it's going to be even warmer southwest of San Antonio, 91 in Carrizo Springs, nearly 90 in Eagle Pass, 96 in Laredo. We'll be at 86 here in San Antonio, 85 in Canyon Lake, 88 in Del Rio, closer view of neighborhoods around San Antonio. Seguin will be at 84. It'll be 85 in New Braunfels, 87 in Poteet, 88 in Hondo, and 87 in Bandera. Now, as we take a look at the weather setup across the nation, some severe weather for some Gulf Coast states here, but I'm interested in this low that's currently moving through Iowa. Now, while this system itself won't be moving through San Antonio, it is going to help to pull some of the cooler air south towards San Antonio by Monday night. For the day tomorrow, though, Though, relatively uneventful. We are going to be in the low 80s for the high and a few sprinkles are possible. I think this particular forecast model is overdoing it. A few sprinkles will be possible. Nothing uh, that too much to be in the way of your day. And then that front is going to move through Monday night into Tuesday. This is a snapshot at midnight Monday night into Tuesday. As you can see, a few thunderstorms are going to be possible ahead of this front. Coverage is not going to be widespread perhaps only about 30% coverage, but by 2 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, while most of us are sleeping, there could be a few rumbles of thunder in the vicinity, and maybe even for the morning commute on Tuesday could be dampened spots. Again, not everybody is going to see rain, but that's our first window for rain. And in fact, we do have a chance for isolated showers pretty much all week long. So we'll start with that potential for storms Monday night, only isolated showers during the week, and then by Thursday night, there's a chance for some storms as well. And it has been a while since we have seen from midnight to midnight in a 24 hour period, even half an inch of rain since February 1st, an inch since August 24th, 2022, more than 200 days and more than two inches of rain. It's been since 2021, 529 days, so we could use some rainfall. Uh, we're probably not going to get a lot when all is said and done by the end of the week, but we at least have some windows for rain. First one up tomorrow night and then behind that front it'll be very windy on Tuesday. Highs will dip into the upper 60s, low 70s, so it's actually going to be pretty cool on Tuesday and Wednesday before we warm back up before our next front on Friday. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 850, 63 degrees now. An adorable kitten who was rescued at Woodlawn Lake is ready to find her forever home. We'll tell you where you can adopt her. That's next. Good morning and welcome back. So a special story we want to tell you about. A cat rescued from a steep canal at Woodlawn Lake earlier this week. Now she's ready to find her forever home. Love this story. The San Antonio Animal Care Services they rescued the cat on Monday after ACS officers were alerted of her being trapped on a tiny island full of debris at Woodlawn Lake. Just take a look at Mystique. According to ACS, Mystique does have a medical condition with her eyes. I'm sorry we can't see a big photo of her right now, but she is in good health and ready to find her forever family. If you're interested in adopting Mystique, you can visit ACS to learn more. On the shelter's website, you can see a smaller yeah, picture a there. Cat, they're very cute, absolutely. Hey, we got the pollen count in. Uh, take a look at this. This is a doozy. Oak is high and molds are high. So unfortunately, if you're allergic to oak, bad day. If you're allergic to mold, bad day. If you're allergic to both, very bad day. Pecan, <laughs> mulberry, sinus medicine. I know, and, <laughs> and pine are low. Now today we have clouds out there right now, but we are going to be seeing those skies clear. 86 and mostly sunny in the afternoon. Winds light and variable. Tomorrow, just a few sprinkles, but generally a dry day. 82. Then Monday night into Tuesday, a chance for storms, a big cool down with highs only in the upper 60s, low 70s. Warming back up by Thursday before another chance for storms on Thursday night and Friday. Thank you, Sarah. Max, you never gave us your pick for your final two for March Madness. That's who a is great it? point. Okay, who is it? Come on, we got like... I don't have the bracket in front of me. I'm obviously going Texas. Okay. And then I... Who's, who's might, your second I pick? I might put FAU on there. The Owls have looked very impressive. Nine seed a roll. and a two seed. Wow. Who knows? Hey, have a great rest of your day. I'll go for the Longhorns. <laughs> hey, go Brahmas.